the moon, the divine feminine, the emotional waters of the self has once again graced us with her full form. Very fittingly to the environment, this full moon is also called the snow moon. How magical. The full moon, the sun and moon are opposing, so we see her entire face illuminated. In this way, we could say the sun and moon are in a celestial dance with each other. The energy is potent, sensual and magnetic. Besides Mother Moon having an effect on waves and tides, for example, with its light, it also illuminates the subconscious mind, which is why emotions run high at this time. Because of this, the full moon as a celestial event gets a bad rap, but in fact, we can use this period of time to our advantage for our spiritual development. Just like any caring mother, she wants her children to learn and grow from their mistakes. The only way for that to be possible is if they face it head on and allow the goddess to crystallize them. In general, this time can be used as a step back. The moon's energy can be used to enlighten what isn't working and what should be released. Interestingly enough, this snow moon is also called the hunger moon. Most of these names come from the Native American tribes. And the hunger moon represents letting go of that which causes you hunger. A desperate desire to allow something better to come in your life. That is why, for me, it is extremely important to clear any resistance or past blockages before setting my intentions. To reevaluate and gain perspective on what it is that I truly need in my life what gives me purpose, what brings me satisfaction and joy, and also on the other side of that, what are things that keep me chained down? Lately, I've been playing with the idea of identity. Many times in my life, and still to this day, I want to be and act in a way that I think others want me to be, based on who I was in the past. I realize that when it comes to my character in social situations, I dial myself down in fear of being too much or too weird, thinking that people would not accept me or would judge me. If someone in a group doesn't want to do something I initiate, I immediately let it go and never ever do something for the sake of my own happiness. They said no, so that means I can't either. I will be untangling this as my shadow work, which is a crucial part of my ritual. There are many layers to one's identity, but nowadays, this has been really prevailing in the way I experience reality. So as someone who is quite indecisive when it comes to picking the theme of her rituals, I say go with what's already there. No matter how many times you worked on it, no matter how small it feels. Ultimately, it's about your human experience and it should feel tailored to you. The full moon isn't just about letting go. It's also about magnetizing and bringing in new light into your life. It's the peak time of the lunar cycle. It's when the energy is at its highest for your manifestations. Many people think Jen, that emotions create illusions. And in some way, emotions are guidelines for us to find a deeper path sensations are beyond the mind and logic and although they might seem scary they are the gateway to other realms of existence the ritual that i designed is very simple and it's something that i find helpful kind of a list of priorities cleansing is so important whenever you start to step into a more ceremonial place and that can be achieved by either taking a shower cleansing the space lighting some incense going on a walk to clear your head then there is a need to connect to the inner being 
getting in the head space and connecting to the heart center. In our day-to-day lives, we are so focused on our mind and the workings of the mind that we forget to connect to our heart. So in order to conduct the ritual from a more sacred, more state, it is important to connect to the heart center. And you can only do that if you calm the mind and silence the mind in the best way you can. You can do yoga, breath work, vocal toning. I find breath work and vocal toning very helpful to ground and also clear and also find this sense of peace within. In order to magnetize, we need to release what's keeping us from actually inviting these new opportunities into our lives. And I find that shadow work is one of the best ways you can achieve that. It is really about diving deep in your unconscious patterns of behavior and exploring what is causing you to get stuck. What is stopping you from finding a new expression, finding a new way. And this can only be done if you start to contemplate on your past situations, your past patterns of behavior and how you perceived reality in the past and how you still perceive it now because the present is a continuation of the past. I shuffled some tarot cards to answer to some of the questions that I had and I couldn't figure out by myself. They assisted get a more clear and realistic view on the situation and as the cards appeared sometimes I got confused or didn't really know how to interpret the message but slowly as I started putting them together I realized that it's about creating a story of the past to understand how these cards connect and I saw because my shadow work was around emotions I saw how the cards connected even through symbolism as on most of the cards it seemed to have appeared the element of water which is connected to emotions and it was such a nice way to see how everything unfolded together and I would like to read a passage of what I wrote. A girl whose mother taught her that she's different. She's not like others. She keeps navigating the sea of her emotions with a boat, when in fact, she's been a mermaid all along. Her innate quality of being other is what makes her special. And instead of declining this in herself, she should embrace it, allow it, Move forward and be brave enough to embrace the uncomfortableness of her emotions instead of trying to escape. As I was walking through the park, I started cultivating this sense of gratitude, acknowledging what life offers me and how thankful I should be for just being alive, for having the opportunity to experience this life this way and even when it gets challenging i still am me and that me is someone who i still do not know but deep down i feel like i've known her for eternity then getting to the spell work essentially this one was a little bit different i realized that Spellwork doesn't have to be always this elaborate scheme. When I went to the park, I gathered some snow and as it melted, it became snow water. So again, in the theme of this full moon being the snow moon, I decided to paint and I didn't really have 
a great plan on what I should paint. I just went with the flow, but again, it seemed clear to me looking back that I, I really was able to put in my intentions into the painting as it represents water of some kind and nature and love and that is all that I want to cultivate in my life and that is all that I want to bring in right now the full moon the divine mother the goddess gives us the opportunity to feel our emotions and to feel is a divine gift Thank you.